Hey everybody, this is Mickey Papillon with TheCellPhoneJunkie.com, and today we're taking a look at the HTC Thunderbolt on Verizon. Now from a purely hardware perspective, you may think that the Thunderbolt is just a remake of the Evo 4G on Sprint or the Inspire 4G on AT&T. For the most part, you'd be right, but it's the inclusion of the 4G LTE network that really sets this device apart from the others. It brings the first real generational increase in speed, though on hardware we saw it nearly a year ago. So inside the box, we've got your standard guides and warranty information. Then the Thunderbolt itself, we'll come back to that in just a second and go through an overview of the hardware. And finally, the AC adapter and micro USB data cable. So the Thunderbolt is available for $250 with a two-year contract on Verizon. And uh, the biggest question that people are going to have on their minds is the speed. We'll come back to that in just a second. Taking a walk around the device on the front side, you can see the four capacitive buttons there on the bottom. Uh, switching over to the left side, you've got the micro USB charging and data port on the bottom. On the top, a 3.5mm headset jack, as well as the power button. And on the right, you've got your volume up and down toggle switch. And just the microphone port on the bottom. Now flipping the Thunderbolt over, you can see an 8 megapixel camera with dual LED flash up near the top left hand corner. And on the bottom, you've got a kickstand. This is something that we find in many of the high-end HTC devices that flips open to reveal a speaker. So we'll turn the device on for the first time and let it boot up. And as it's doing so, we'll talk about some of the other specifications. It's got a one gigahertz Qualcomm MSM 8655 Snapdragon processor. That's one of the newer processors. The battery is only 1400 milliamp hours, which is a little underpowered. We'll talk about that in a bit. It's got 768 megabytes of RAM, eight gigs of internal memory, and comes pre-installed with a 32 gigabyte card. The screen is 4.3 inches, capacitive, and it's got 800 by 480 resolution. Uh, rounding out the specs, Wi-Fi B, G, and N on 2.4 gigahertz, as well as mobile Wi-Fi hotspot, DLNA, and a kickstand like we showed you just a minute ago. And now that we're powered up, we can see full 4G service here, which will be Nice to show you an example here in just a moment. Flipping through the screens, we've got the HTC Sense UI. This is a new version of the Sense UI, which I kind of like. I'm not, a, a, I'm not opposed to it. I don't find that it's obtrusive in any way, and I think it does a nice job of, uh, of providing enhanced experience to the user. All of our applications are here, including a number of Verizon-specific ones. We'll pop into the settings real quick and show you that uh, we are indeed running Android 2.2.1. You can see that there on the top of the screen. And so it's a little bit higher version of Froyo, but uh, still Froyo nonetheless. So now the real test. Let's check out the 4G speeds. As you can see on the top, we are still on the 4G LTE service. So we'll pop in to the Android market and uh, download an application here, one of my favorites. That would be speedtest.net. Now, the speed test application is one that I use all the time just to make sure that I've got the greatest speeds that I can possibly get on my device. So we'll go ahead and click on that to start the download. And just like that, the entire application has completed downloading and we are installing. Installation is complete, so let's go run a test. Immediately, you can see an 85 millisecond ping with about 14 megabit per second downloads there. The upload side has caused some issues for all the testers that are using this. The speed test app cannot figure out uh, the upload side. So, uh, but you'll see the speeds are quite nice on the download. Now, with all that speed, let's talk about the battery life for a moment. I knew the battery was going to be a wild card. And on my first day of use, the first full charge, I was able to kill the battery in exactly three hours. Now, I was really stress testing the device. I was making calls, downloading apps, and just really using anything on the device that I could think of. But to have a dead battery by 11 a.m. on a workday is not good. So I plugged it in, and two hours later, I had a fully charged device. So I wanted to max out the connection to simulate the hardest use that I could think of. So I pulled up Microsoft.com and began downloading multiple Windows updates that I had tethered with Wi-Fi to a Windows XP machine. Two gigabytes of data, and one hour later, I had sucked down 40% of the battery. Doing some quick math, it seems a single charge can provide approximately two and a half hours or five gigs of data while tethered. 
Speaking of tethering, the Thunderbolt makes mobile hotspot service nice and easy by opening the application and checking the box to start the service. And configuring it on an iPhone is nice and easy. Just go into Wi-Fi and it will populate in your network. So you'll pull up the Verizon service and you'll see on the Thunderbolt, you've got one connected user. It'll show the Mac address there for my, uh, for my iPhone and I'll be off and running. Pulling up the speedtest.net application on the iPhone, we will begin the test and see how we do. So an overall total of 9 megabits per second down and nearly 9 up. Switching over to another one of my favorites, the Sling Player mobile application. And I've got one Sling Player configured, and that's the one that is on my local network. Though, as you'll see, I'm still connected to the LTE service. And now I'm connected, and I can click on the remote and make a change to the channel. We'll go to uh, channel 38, which is CNN headline news. We're on the uh, regular CNN service there. So we'll switch over here nice and uh, quickly there. Not too shabby for being on a mobile device. I can then go in and type in uh, 47, switch over to Fox News to see what's going on over on Fox. And within just about five seconds, we're switched over to the channel. And finally, we'll test out music streaming with the Slacker personal radio service. Another one of my favorites. I love using Slacker, especially when I'm on the go in the car. So you'll see the application loads nice and fast. And the station that I was on previously, Flogging Molly, immediately begins to stream. I click the next track button and it switches to Green Day. And you'll see it just takes about three seconds, which is about what you see when you're doing this over Wi-Fi. So very, very nice experience. And you're definitely seeing the enhanced speeds of LTE to take advantage of this. And one final test to check out the processor speed of the Thunderbolt. Using it is somewhat like a Ferrari. The speed will blow you away at first, but when you start looking around, you'll see some faults. You'll realize it's still a standard CD player where you hope the high-end touchscreen navigation system would be, and the fuel tank can really only get you 100 miles before you need to refuel. Though that 1 GHz processor in the phone is plenty for most people, but the tech community is now clamoring for more, needing dual-core processors in speeds in excess of 1.2 GHz. The battery technology of today just can't seem to keep up with the network technology of tomorrow. The HTC Thunderbolt on Verizon, easily the fastest smartphone on the market thanks to Verizon's 4G LTE network. This has been Mickey Papillon with the CellPhoneJunkie.com.